Hi friends, so today in this blog we are going to take a look at one of the most simple uh, machine learning algorithms called the k-nearest neighbor and we would also take a look at the example uh, with the iris data set. Uh, we'll learn the concept first and then move on to, to uh, do the demo on, on, on the uh, data set. K-nearest neighbor as an algorithm is this the most simple one and it's all about the majority. So if I were to say uh, uh, in literature, if I were to tell you uh, birds of same same feather flocks together if you just keep this in mind you would be able to understand what k nearest neighbor says uh, and what it means uh, so what it says is uh, if there is a data data point and you want to classify the data point it it'll all be uh, uh, be on the basis of the nearest neighbors uh, and and the number of nearest neighbor would judge what uh, class does that data point belong to so as you can see in this see in this example uh, let's say we have uh, these data points in a two dimensional space uh, and we want uh, to predict the classification for a particular uh, data point which is star denoted by star in this is uh, example if we pick a value of k uh, which means our majority uh, of uh, a value of three data point uh, is important and is all that matters so a space of three data points will be considered of the three most nearest data points will be considered to uh, judge the classification for for the data point star so in, in this case I have two purple and, and one yellow uh, in that case the purple wins and the uh, data point in question becomes a purple should the value be three uh, secondly, if the value were to be 6, uh, a, a larger space of the nearest data points from star would be considered and in that case, uh, you know, uh, star would be a yellow because uh, there are 4 yellows and 2 purples in for a value of k equals to 6. Uh, now, how it is determined, the, the, the continuous data variables are determined with the help of the Euclidean distance and for text classifications, it's the Hamming distance which is kind of used. Uh, now, I think that sets the context or the concept of K nearest neighbor and, and, and we, we shall see what are the pros and cons and how we can use it. Uh, now, let's say we are trying to classify uh, for, for, for data point star and as I said, you know, birds of same feather flock together. Now, what I have here, I think I've covered all of that. Uh, I think we should jump onto the example. So what we have is the data set. Uh, we have a data set, the famous iris data set. Iris uh, has three species here. And if I were to apply filter, you would see there are three species, uh, iris, centosa, versicular and, and virginica. And we have 50 data points each, uh, you know, and we have about 150 records. Uh, total and, and, and we are based on this data we want to uh, for any incoming uh, records uh, for their attributes we want to classify the species of, of the, uh, the flower. Now what we have in terms of features to be able to classify is the sepal length, uh, sepal width, petal length and petal width uh, for these uh, different flowers of three species. Uh, based on which we would want to build a machine learning algorithm using k means uh, k nearest neighbors and we should and we want to classify that now let's go back jump onto r and and see uh, how can we start with so this is my file let's try to read it uh, let's try to read couple of records and see yep so we have uh, these four uh, features and we want uh, to use uh, amongst these the best ones which can help us to classify so let's uh, plot first the sepal length and sepal width for uh, these and see how it looks like so while we plot it what we see is uh, on the basis of, of sepal length uh, and width uh, these these are the different uh, you know uh, iris species centosa versicola and virginica although we can clearly classify uh, you know using these uh, sepal uh, details we will be able to classify the uh, iris centosa which are in blue but overall the iris, iris versicola and virginica are kind of a mixed bag and it doesn't give us a, it's, it's a quite a mix uh, of the data there is no clear distinction uh, between uh, these species if we were to to use the sepal length and, and sepal width uh, now let's take a look at the petal length how uh, good or bad is that for us uh, 
well so if you take a look at uh, the petal uh, details what you can see is clearly iris centosa is, is, is a clear classification and for the rest of the two as well we kind of we are able to classify so if we were to use the best of them i think petal uh, would be the one to go with uh, to build our our classification so that the data exploration kind of has helped us uh, identify the, the features that we want to use uh, the next important uh, step is uh, I'm trying to get the records uh, is, is about sampling. So uh, what I'm trying to do here is I'm getting uh, the iris centosa out of my data set solely. So there are 50 records and these are only from iris centosa. That's all they are. Uh, similarly, I'm doing for the rest of, of, of the virginica and, and versicular. I am uh, picking them up into different data frames. Next one I'm trying to do is, is, is build my test and train data set so i am setting a random seed uh, and then i am i am picking 70% of the data so i generate a random sample of 70% of records in each of the bundles which means out of 50 i pick 30 random records uh, for each of the three species uh, and that's all uh, i'm trying to do here and and based on them i am classifying my data set into train and and test for centosa virginica and versicular uh, i have done that the next so the sampling is complete now what we are trying to do do is combine them into my train and test uh, data set so i am just using r bind to to bind my uh, train and test data set records so what you should have is in your train you should be having all of uh, of, of the, the records here which are from the three different species and uh, similarly for test you should have about 45 records uh, from from them uh, now now let's also take a look at the records count if we are, are, are good and, and what I said is, is all this yes 105 and So we have 40 of them that makes sense and now let's so what we have decided here so far is we are going to use petal length and petal width uh, and and so we are creating our train final and and with the label so we are uh, pushing the length uh, and the width features into our training data set and we are creating a train label which contains the species uh, similarly we are doing the same for our test label and here comes the prediction or here comes the KNN. So what you say is, you say uh, test prediction is, is the model and it uses the KNN algorithm. And, and we are saying train, which is having the train data set, which is having the petal length and petal width. And we have the test, which is having the test data set. Uh, and we are using the train label, which has the species details from the 105 uh, train label of, of, of data so let's see if you can if I can show you uh, you should just have the PC details uh, train final would have just the uh, petal length and petal width and so is for uh, you know 45 records from test final and K the important part is K uh, ideally what we have is the train data set is about uh, about 105 records so the, the what what is the value of K that we pick in this case uh, we go with the square root of, of the, the uh, number of uh, records or number of observations in our test uh, or, or in our train data set which is 105 so uh, ideally we'll just start with that and we will run our KNN uh, now let's take the accuracy of our so we, uh, the model is built uh, it's, it's done now let's check the accuracy against our, uh, our, our test so we have the test label and which is this and we had actually done trained our model so let's uh, check the predictions for the model so we have the confusion matrix coming up for you so as you can see uh, these are the test labels and these are the predictions so the system predicted 15 of 15 which were centosa the system predicted as centosa the iris versicular the diagonals are the ones which are the correct ones so let's see if, if you can see here, there is this one record which uh, it is inaccurate, which means the test prediction was uh, Virginica, 
but the test label or the record was versicolor so this is efficient but how far is out of these 45 you have 44 of them as correct predictions while one is, is a miss so you can calculate the percentages and you can see what's the score of your uh, of, of your uh, model now what if we had chosen sepal and uh, what would uh, our prediction look like we would be curious to understand and, and, and take a look at that as well so uh, I'm running the same record again I'm building the model against against the sepal this time uh, uh, let's run it so that we can at least be confident that we have used the correct uh, features this time uh, And I'm using the confusion matrix now you, as you can see the confusion matrix is, is uh, Has a lot of mistakes this time around this this was your Petal details for for the model while this is your uh, sepal details. So which means you have uh, you have 2 plus 8 10 records which are incorrect in that case uh, so so yeah I mean we have chosen the right features and we have got the right model now let's take a look at what's what's the uh, drawbacks of, of k nearest it's 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 a good algorithm but it's one of the most basic ones uh, now the drawbacks we need to understand uh, as it, as I've said the square root uh, for your k uh, the analysis uh, you know time is, is required for the best scoring we have to retrain the model again uh, one of the drawbacks is, is it is sensitive to outliers now, uh, now if an engineer would have to code for KNN for each time, for each new data point for predicting the classification, he or she would have to compare from all the data points and sort its distance in the order of, of ascending and then pick the first K, which means if I were to uh, to uh, predict the classification for a K value of 5 I would, and I have a data set of 100, I would uh, sort that data from the point in question uh, and and then pick the most nearest five records and, and then get a majority vote out of them so what you can see is it's sensitive to outliers because one or two records uh, here and there in in the in the observation data can make a drastic change or drastic difference in the in the uh, classification results and it's a lazy algorithm because it is not prejudged it is run at the at the, at the results of the classification are computed at the runtime and it's and hence the execution time also increases because more the data points uh, you know uh, in, in, in your observations the larger time it takes because it has to compare uh, the distances from each of the points so I hope these are you know one of the the, the, the uh, you know uh, out of the drawbacks which will help you decide which uh, you know uh, this algorithm whether you would want to use them or not it's all it's very basic algorithm and it and it uh, is used in machine learning but how efficient would that be uh, keep that in mind as well uh, so next we will be discussing the support vector machines uh, classification for the next uh, you know uh, blog uh, and then finally we would try and compare logistics against support vector and against your your your, your k nearest thank you